Time slips and lost time are unnerving experiences. They have been surmised to be extraterrestrial encounters, dimensional shifts or even brain strokes. The most disturbing reports are those correlated by more than one person experiencing the same impossible time jump. Characteristically, time slips occur when someone sets out on a journey, long or short, along a familiar path which is clearly defined and should take a specific time to complete. The journey appears normal, except at the end the person realizes they have covered a number of miles in an impossibly short space of time. They are unsettled to find themselves at their destination sometimes hours earlier than possible. There have even been cases of time loss, where a person set out on a journey, traveled normally, yet arrived at their destination hours later than explainable. Where did the missing time go? Usually it is only upon arrival that the discrepancy in time is noticed. Are there dimensional warps we sometimes inadvertently pass through? Could physics someday confirm and explain the existence of these time slips? Enough people continue to have these experiences to justify scientific investigation into this phenomenon. A white Ford pickup pulled up to cattle pasture near Ponca City, Oklahoma, in early fall 1971, and stopped at a gate. Carl, Mark and Gordon worked for cattle feed distributor and were sent to this remote area to pick up a feeder. What they found there has kept them silent for 41 years. We opened the gate, which was barbed wire with no lock, and entered, Carl said. We went on the property, which was covered with grass up to and over the hood of the truck. They drove through the tall grass to the tank that sat close to a red barn and got out of the truck. We realized the tank was almost half full and too heavy to load, Carl said. We decided to leave and drove around the red barn and we saw a large, two-story white house, with no lights in front of us. The trio drove back to the cattle feed company and the boss said he'd drain the tank and they could pick it up tomorrow. We went to the location to retrieve the tank the next night, Carl said. This time we decided to go through the old white big house on the hill and brought our shotguns. They drove onto the property over the path they'd made through the grass the day before and loaded the tank. Then they pulled around the barn toward the house. What they saw burned into their memories. It was no longer there, Carl said. We walked up the hill where it stood and there were no signs of demolition, no foundation, nothing at all. What we all seemed to witness the night before was no longer there. We have talked to each other over the years but none of us can begin to explain this vision. Did these men witness a slip in time? Time slips have been reported throughout history. English women vacationing in France in 1901 claimed they stepped into the French Revolution, and two English couples traveling in Spain in the 1970s stayed at an oddly archaic hotel that was simply gone on their return journey. Physicists like Albert Einstein, Michio Kaku, and Stephen Hawking have all said time travel is theoretically possible, our science just can't achieve it. But what if nature can? Or what if we have and no one is talking about it? The light in the sky shone white, far from the greens and reds Jake saw during the aurora borealis of 2004, visible in North America as far south as the lower Midwest. Jake, 15 stood outside his parents' home in the Lake of the Ozarks, Missouri, around 10 p.m. May 28, leaning against a truck and looking at the lights. He didn't know his life was about to change. A bright white glow suddenly filled the northern horizon, he said. This looked nothing like the northern lights, nor did it behave like them. The light moved like the light of a copy machine. The single bar of brightness moved from west to east over Jake's head and disappeared. I thought that I should maybe go inside at this time, and found myself unable to move, he said. Numbness grew in his arms and legs and he blacked out. When he woke, he knew he'd been somewhere else. I felt woozy and almost sedated, he said. Time seemed muddled in my head. He walked into the house to find he'd been outside an hour. 
It took most of the night for me to tell my parents what happened, and most of the time I kept telling them that I thought the calendar was wrong, it should at least be after 2008, he said. To this day, my mother remembers bits of this, mainly because I looked at her and asked point blank, is the black man president? What happened to Jake? Seizure? Psychological phenomena? Or did Jake accidentally take a brief, four-year step into 2008? Jake's slip is just one in a long line of stories from people who have brushed against a different time, such as RAF pilot Sir Victor Goddard who encountered airplanes in 1935 that didn't exist until 1939, and a 100-year-old Swiss watch found in a Chinese Ming Dynasty tomb. People may slip like this all the time. Kel opened the door of his 1999 Chevrolet S10 next to a convenience store gas pump in Springfield, Missouri, when a large man accosted him. As I left the gas station, some large melon-headed man dressed in a business suit yelled, What year is it? Kel said. The man stood at a spot Kel would have walked by when he left the store, but he hadn't seen him. The man wore a dark black suit with a rough fiber texture, Kel said. Along the lines of the things Teddy Roosevelt could wear. What year is it? The man yelled again. The man was white, about 35 to 40 years old, clean-shaven, normal, but he'd asked an odd question. Kel answered it. 2003, Kel told him. The man's face contorted in anger. What year is it? He screamed at Kel. Again I said 2003. The large man screamed the question one more time. I said 2003 so he could hear me, Kel said. Then he quit asking. Kel glanced away from the man as he slid into his truck, but safely inside, Kel turned to get another look at him. The man was gone. He disappeared from the front of the gas station, Kel said. In the seconds it took Kel to slip into his truck, the man simply vanished. Kel looked, but the man hadn't stepped inside the store the only place he could have gone in that short amount of time. He was just gone. These stories are not as rare as people think, Kel said. But the stories are so bizarre that I don't think anyone would want to come forward to tell it. Who would believe you? Stay paranoid my friends.